everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I'm here to talk to you about all of the books that I read in February. February got off to a slow start reading wise and honestly I didn't feel like I read that much until I looked at my list and thought for the shortest month of the year this is actually quite a bit. The first book I finished was my audiobook, which was The Windsor Knot by S.J. Bennett. This is the first in a series of mysteries about Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who ends up doing a bit of detective work on the sly by means of her assistant. In this first book, after a lovely gala evening at Windsor Castle, a young Russian man is found dead in his bedroom the next morning. Naturally, this upsets the Queen greatly, and so she sets out to find out what happened to him. I loved this audiobook. It was so sweet, very subtle, and yet still very thrilling and intense as you would want a mystery to be. All of the characters were fleshed out so nicely. You could really see this actually happening. Part of you really hopes that the Queen really was like this and we just don't know. And I really need to continue with the series because it was just wonderful. Next, I absolutely flew through A Marvelous Light by Freya Marsk. I cannot wait to read the rest of this series. There are going to be two more and I cannot wait. This is a novel about a youngish and 20-something man in Edwardian England who ends up being given this low-level government job and he knows nothing about what he's doing, including the fact that he is in fact a magical liaison. He did not even know that magic exists in England until the man who is supposed to advise him comes in expecting to see his predecessor and so he gets swept up in discovering how magic works what on earth has happened to his predecessor? Is the same fate going to befall him? All while these two men begin to fall in love with each other. It was just perfect. It was so thrilling, so intriguing. The love story was perfectly paced. It is very steamy. I didn't fully understand the magic system, but honestly, it didn't really matter. It was just wonderful. I loved it. I cannot wait to read more. I then read Where Angels Fear to Tread by E.M. Forster. This wasn't my favorite E.M. Forster. It's about a woman who has been recently widowed and felt incredibly stifled by her in-laws. And so she decides to go on a trip to Italy, whereupon she meets a man and she writes back saying that she is engaged to him. And the family is outraged, how could she marry this foreigner? And sends Philip, I forget if Philip is a cousin or her brother-in-law, but they send Philip out to go and try and dissuade her out of it. And things go on from there. It's so short, I feel like I can't really tell you more than that. It was unexpected and that made it intriguing. I thought the plot was going to go a certain way and it ended up going in a different direction, but I just didn't like any of the characters. They weren't even intriguing in their unlikability. They were just all terrible people or painted in a really terrible light, which also felt incredibly awkward. Forster's writing is still beautiful, but I just didn't feel it. Then on that same day, I finished Whatever Next, Lessons from an Unexpected Life by former Lady Anne Glen Connor. You may recognize her from her stint on The Graham Norton Show once when she published her first book, Lady in Waiting, which was her memoir of growing up in the early half of the 20th century in the English aristocracy. She was lady in waiting to Princess Margaret for many years, was close with both her and the late Queen Elizabeth, and had an incredible life of her own. And so she wrote this next book summarizing what she has learned from each role that she has had in her life now that she has turned 90. I really enjoyed it. It was the kind of down-to-earth, no-nonsense, and yet incredibly comforting advice that you would want from a grandmother, a great aunt that you're close to. 
It did also kind of feel like a summary of a lot of the things that she talks about in Lady in Waiting as well, but it was still a lovely addition and it was just what I needed at that time. Then I read The Haunting Season, which is a collection of ghostly short stories by a number of different historical fiction authors, such as Bridget Collins, Imogen Hermes Gower, Kieran Millwood Hargrave, Andrew Michael Hurley, Jess Kidd, Elizabeth McNeil, Natasha Pulley, and Laura Purcell. I already knew most of these authors beforehand, so I was really excited to get into it. And I will say these were very, very good short stories, but I can't say I really enjoyed them because they are so ghostly that it really freaked me out a little bit. I had to pace myself on reading these. I couldn't read too many at a time. And I also preferred to try and read them in daylight, which is incredibly hard to do when one works in the wintertime. There isn't a whole lot of daylight left, but I would highly recommend this series, especially if you are into Victorian-esque ghost stories and darker historical fiction. They're very well written. Then I finished Gachar Gochar by Vivek Shanbag, which is an Indian novella, I would say. And who was this translated by? Srinath Perur. And this was recommended by Ariel Bisset. It was one of her favorite books of the year a year or two ago, I think. And it chronicles this one particular family who was living in relative poverty and then through unexpected circumstances finds themselves more and more well off. But that also brings to light various tensions in the family and exaggerates them. Gachar Gochar is a phrase that I think means that things are tangled, things are askew, things are topsy-turvy, you can't make sense of them. And I will say that is very accurate. I loved the premise of this story. Some of the moments that he describes still stick with me, but overall it just felt like kind of a mess. It felt like our main character just rambling about things that he had experienced and none of them really in any kind of order or that seemed to lead anywhere. It was a very bleak feeling story. So I'm very glad that I read it, but it wasn't my favorite read of the month. And my final physical read for the month was Thank You Jeeves by P.G. Woodhouse. I always adore a good Jeeves and Worcester. If you're unfamiliar, Bertie Worcester is a young-ish gentleman in the 1920s or thereabouts in England who is so rich he doesn't have to work for a living, but he often gets himself into a bind, usually being engaged to someone that he does not want to be engaged to, and his very intelligent butler Jeeves always has to get him out of it. I loved this episode when it was a television series. I'm more familiar with the television series than I am with the books, but they did change a great deal for the television series, which I think was to its benefit. First of all, they separated out two strands of the story and fit them into two different episodes, I think. I could be wrong about that, but the main story here is that Bertie is reunited with a young American heiress that he met in New York once named Pauline Stoker, and she and his friend Chuffy have fallen in love. However, there are a variety of parental roadblocks to this relationship, which could spell trouble for Bertie. There are a number of racial elements that are referenced in here that have not aged well at all. It may have been how people would have spoken in the 20s and acted in the 20s, but we have learned better now. So those moments do not sit comfortably, which is why I prefaced it with I loved the television episode, because the television episode cuts out those elements and just has Bertie playing the trombone very badly and is thus kicked out of his apartment, and that kicks off the rest of the events of the novel. 
In here, he wants to play the banjo lele, and in the small town that he goes to, there is a minstrel band. And there are a couple elements of people using blackface to escape from a variety of situations. Mm, it's not his best aged novel. But I love the style in which he writes, and I love these characters overall. So I do recommend the series, maybe not this particular story. And then finally, I finished listening to Nevermore by Jessica Townsend, which is the first in the Nevermore series about Morgan Crow. I'm sure you heard about it. It was all over booktube a few years ago. If you haven't, though, Morgan Crow was a cursed child in her town. Anything that went wrong was blamed on her, and she was destined to die at the end of that year's cycle, so around when she was 11 or 12 years old. However, just as the clock is about to strike, a man named Jupiter North sweep, sweeps in and takes her off to a parallel universe where she is going to be trained to compete in the trials to become part of the Wondrous Society. It's often billed as Harry Potter, but with a female protagonist, and that is sort of how it feels. I will say that I think the adult characters around Morrigan are a bit more supportive and a bit more forthcoming with information than some of the adults in Harry Potter. It's very strange going back and watching Harry Potter as a teacher and evaluating every decision that the adults make. It's very, very weird. But I think these adult characters are a little bit more forthcoming. Not completely, otherwise there would be no plot in any fantasy novel if the guide character told you everything that you needed to know when you felt you should have known that. Hello Gandalf as well. But I really enjoyed it. It was fun, it was gripping, I am fascinated by their villain character. There were some truly frightening moments and I'm very excited to continue it in book two. And finally, I started reading Sister Novelists by Devani Loser. I am buddy reading this with Megan of Megan the Story Girl. I haven't gotten very far yet, so this will definitely extend into March. But the few chapters that I have read have been really intriguing. Slightly dry at times, but still very interesting to read about these two women who were so involved in the literary scene around Jane Austen and Walter Scott, and yet no one has heard of. So those were all of the books that I read in February. I hope that my ramblings were enough and made sense to you. If you have any further questions about any of these books, please leave me a comment down below and I'd be happy to talk more about them. Or indeed, if you have any recommendations for me based on how I felt about the things that I read this month, also let me know in the comments down below. It's always such a pleasure hearing from any of you, and until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.